everyone, doing something here that's slightly different. Um, been a while since I did an unboxing video. In fact, I've only done like one, which was my first unboxing video, which was a unboxing of a bootleg, uh, Xbox 360 media remote, if I recall correctly, um, that I'd gotten on, on online and discovered it was a bootleg and didn't work on from Xbox 360 and... Yeah, so I did that, and that was ages ago on my channel. Like, that was before I was actually starting breaking it all down proper. And since then, I've upgraded my tech a lot. And one of the ways in which I have upgraded my tech... Turn this off so that there's less weirdness on that side of my face. Is I have gotten a Gorillapod and a mount for a cell phone. This also works on a regular tripod as well. But in any case, I recently got an Xbox Series X. In fact, as of this recording, just the other day. So I said, you know what? Yes, lots of other people, lots more professional outfits than I have done unboxings of the Xbox Series X. But, you know, if I'm going to take this, if I'm going to like seriously try out this tripod thing, and see what I can really do with it. Let's tr try to do an unboxing video and see how it works out. Um, and then also talk about the bit about the console once I got it set up. Um, so I will keep in mind that I've only done like my had the console for less than 24 hours. Um, I played a bit of stuff on it, and I've mainly spent most of the time doing updates and that sort of thing. So what I will do is I will have the video here. My fairly rough video of the unboxing process. And by fairly rough, I mean, I'm going to admit straight up, this is kind of unsalvageable in the edit. Like, kind of just generally thinking about the footage and sound issues and that sort of thing. Part of it's because the ideal place to do this would have been at the kitchen table, but the kitchen table was unavailable for reasons beyond my control. So that's kind of out of the question. Um, and so instead, I'm doing it on the bed where I, on the board I use for when I'm wrapping paper, wrapping presents on my, um, out in, on the bed during holiday season when I want to wrap presents in a place where no one can tell what I'm wrapping. So, there was that. Um, and on the other side of things with all of this, um, again, the sound quality is not ideal. Um, and I had to kind of move the, 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 the amount of moving around of the um, Gorillapod definitely made it clear that this was not the ideal way to do this in terms of um, this sort of presentation. This is definitely something where it would work better probably with a more, in hindsight, you know what, actually, I'm going to get, I'm going to save my reflections on the actual um video for afterwards and then once i have my thoughts i will uh, then once i've gone through the actual unboxing i will give my reflections on the unboxing process and on the xbox series x i will place a timestamp right here for where you want to go if you just want if you wanted to skip my rough unboxing video or if you want to see some amateurish guy like me um trying to put together an unboxing video on the super cheap as <laughs> super cheap as you get for a console there you go Right, so we have here the box for the Xbox Series X in its full grandeur. And I do mean grandeur. It is a fairly substantial box. Um, I am using my bed and a board to let me rotate it around a bit on, basically, because, long story short, um, <laughs> um, this is a big box and the table doesn't have a lot of space. Let me, to give some perspective on the box... We have, for scale, a copy of the Shadowrun 5th Edition Core Rulebook, which has handy. It is, this is a fairly substantial rulebook as far as role-playing game rulebooks go. Actually, you know, better comparison. The Monster Manual. It's a relatively smaller book, but if you play Dungeons & Dragons, you probably, particularly the GM, you probably have a copy of this handy, and you know exactly how big this is. And this is... So for height, it is about as tall as the, as the rule book on its side. 
And if so, and on upright, is similarly, if you look, about as long. In fact, basically, but the side of the box, you have a done copy of the rule book right there. So that should give you an approximate idea about how big this box is, and if you're, uh, and what to keep in mind for when you're, you know, doing role play, like when you're you know, making space to unbox this and pack this up. Or, or, pack, or unpack this, and also in terms of, you know, saving this box for storage once you've opened it and got it set up, just in case any warranty stuff happens, because, you know, that happens with, with consoles sometimes. All right, so, first things first, we need to cut the plastic. Actually, let's put it on this side. I'll make an appropriate edit. So, first off, so I'm going to put an edit in there to get around that little cut. So, first off, that's a, or rather to say, to stick to the cutting, I should say. Har har. First off, that is a fairly hefty uh, plastic for the, oh, missed one. Okay, so after the fact, so after the fact, I discovered there's some actual nice little handles on there to help you appropriately cut the plastic without, you know, or as they cut, like tear off the plastic, as opposed to having to cut it, which is good because that is some fairly heavy duty plastic. You are unlikely to have one of these pop open in shipment. So now let's see what happens. So let's see what it looks like once we first open the box. So nice phone insert up top to keep things from rattling around. Heavy foam over in here. Definite some definite apple tones going on here for the um, presentation. Up in the back, it looks like we have cables. We have controller. Get to that in a minute. We have power cord. Just standard power cord, looks like there's no power brick. And a HDMI cable. I am actually, I don't know if I'm going to be using this. I might swap it out, swap my existing cable out for this one. Um, because it's going to be taking an existing spot in my entertainment center. Probably the one that's even used by my PlayStation 4, which is going to get used, moved somewhere else in the entertainment center. So that should be, so that's going to be less of an issue. Um, And this is actually this is pretty hefty. I can, I cannot one hand this.
All right. Okay. So this is a physical button up there, much as with the uh, Xbox One. It's got more, much more movement to it than, say, the one for the Xbox uh, 360 had. Um, one USB port in the front, vertical disk drive there. Also worth noting, it goes all the way to the bottom. Um, I give the feet down here for the disk slot. So, depending on where you hope this put in your entertainment center, I can see that some you need to pay attention to as far as like your dust and that sort of thing. I'm interested to see how that works out. Heat vents on top, definitely designed to be for more vertical orientation. You have a bunch of ports back here. There's uh, our storage expansion. I did not buy the expansion part this time. We have two high-speed uh, USB ports, network port, and HDMI out, plus a power, co uh, power cord. As been mentioned with other discussions at the back of the box, none of the weirdness that's on the Xbox Series X, uh, Xbox Three uh, One regarding USB ports for pass through cable box pass through or any of the other fun stuff. On this side, we actually have several more small rubber feet. Clearly, if you're supposed to be put, if you put this thing this on the side, it's supposed to sit down. Like this. So the controller. This one, one hand. Batteries are separate inside the unit. Looks like they're taking double A's instead of triple A's, which is fine. Um, very textured grip on the bottoms of this controller. It's definitely not going to slip around in your hand. I like. Oh, texture on the triggers as well. I'm not sure what that picks up, um, but and it, like nice action on the triggers. Again, little not as much texture on the bumpers. Very clicky D-pad. Move over here. I'll try this out with some fighting games. See how that works out. Um, but this is interesting. Um, also, the way the headphone jack on the bottom is set up is a little different. I mean, more professional people than I have gone through this. No, see, it's about the same. It's exactly the same. Uh, this is my, this is an Xbox One controller. And I have for my computer and the same setup on the bottom. So never mind. Forget I said that. Stick with me. So, now the next step is for me is getting this set up. I'm not going to record that because... That's as well as entering passwords and all sorts of stuff, and I don't need you to see that information. So, I'll catch you later. Uh, I'll probably do another video later on doing some, taking a look at, at some of my Xbox One games and seeing how they shape up. See y'all when that video comes out. Right, so we have here the box for the Xbox Series X. Right, so back to me. Um... So, as far quick note, how I was able to get the Xbox Series X. Um, long story short, in spite of how fast these things are going, the thing I learned as far as for getting Xbox Series X to goes is two. You have two things going for you um, that for getting the Xbox Series X that you don't have as of this recording when it comes to getting a PlayStation Five. First, the Xbox. Well, first, either way, you want to go. I was able to get this because I went through Best Buy. Best Buy, at least in the state of Oregon, is currently only doing console purchases through in-store pickup only, which actually probably makes for a really good way to enforce purchase requirements. And it's hard to get away with being with, with using your bots to buy ten consoles when there's a limit of one. When you by pulling up to the store. When you have the one car and you have to explain, oh yes, I'm picking up my console for for Bob, Dick, and Harry, 
as opposed when there's when Bob should only be buying the one console or other when, when the limit is just Bob because it allows Best Buy to say oh if, if Dick and Harry want their console they can come themselves if Dick and Harry do in fact actually exist I also I also don't think that you're in fact buying a console for Larry, Curly, Mo, and Shemp. And Curly Joe, I don't think that's a person at all. Getting briefly editorial about the three stooges here. Serious topics. Um so in any case, there's that. Also, by my observations that I suspicion that there is I also and going forward, I got the console through the Xbox Series X All Access plan, which basically means, if you're unfamiliar with it, if you've ever bought like an expensive cell phone and had to do payments on your cell phone bill for a big chunk of time, that's how this works. That's how, basically how Series X works is that you're doing cell phone bill style payments over a couple years with the ability to pay extra on this if you're so inclined through a web portal and so forth to pay it down sooner. So the consoles that are being done through... Near, Near as I can tell, the consoles that are being done through All Access are being set aside for those purpose. It's they're not shake, taking from a pooled stock, at least through Best Buy. Walmart and other places may be doing things differently. And that matters because with the Series X All Access, you are also getting a year's worth of Ultimate with this. And this means that the total cost technically is steeper than if you just buy it. Like, it's, if you lay it all out, you are paying, over time, around 800 bucks, but in re but in more manageable payments, as opposed to just 600 700 bucks. Which, the thing is, if you're trying to flip a console, if you're buying up a bunch of consoles to flip them at a significant markup of $1,000, um, $1,400, that sort of thing, you know, the scumbags on eBay? Yeah, I'm calling you scumbags if you're watching this. Um, that's not... That hurts your markup significantly. I mean, yes, theoretically, you can go back in and go, oh, I my check has cleared. Um, I've... Um, bought the, uh, the the check from the person who I've scalped this to has cleared. Um, there we go. But the also thing is with this is for the payment system, you're putting in your social security number. You have to go through a credit check process and that sort of thing. A lot of the stuff that you have to do if you're buying a steeper cell, if you're buying a cell phone and getting financing through it for your through your cell phone plan through your mobile service provider, that sort of thing. So that takes care of that. So that weeds out a lot of people from the scalper market. So basically, you are more likely competing with other people who just want a console for themselves. This doesn't mean that they're, that the competition is light. This doesn't mean that there aren't a lot of people you're up against. You still are, but it reduces it significantly. And I think that's the strength there. Now, setup process, quick, quick notes on setup process, and my first experience is playing the console. Um... So the process was very straightforward. Um, like you, you haven't seen the unboxing. Some people have done is you just use the Xbox app, Xbox app on your phone, and it set things up. Um, if you have your settings information backed up to the cloud, to uh, Microsoft servers, it will just yoink those right away. Um, also, if you have your save games up in the cloud, same general thing. Um, and I mean, really, if you um, so th with most Xbox games, those as far as Xbox Series X. And um, uh, are there Xbox uh, One games? Those, I believe, go up to the cloud automatically, so you should still have access to your saves, no problem, which is good. Um, I think I have not... I still have my hard drive for my Xbox One. It's actually still hooked up. Um, I have migrated it to the front room of the house to use as a Blu-ray player. I was looking up the side like this, because that's where the, I got the camera on, the image of myself on on my frame, and I'm trying to keep track of myself. It's a bad habit. Any case. So, I've got the Xbox One still hooked up, just using a different room as a blue, as a 4K Blu-ray player. But, um, so I still have access to the saves if I need to manually upload them to the cloud if I have to. Um, but in any case, there's that. Um, so very quickly, step there. 
you still have to go through your game download process, um, installing off of discs and downloading patches and that sort of thing. And this is where I suspect I ran into an issue. So, got everything set up, started a whole bunch of games to download. For the first thing I did is I had gotten from Gamefly, um, Wolfenstein, the New Colossus for the Xbox One. And I had been planning to play it on the Xbox One, but then I went, oh wait, I have the Series X. I'll wait a few, like, once I ordered the Series X, like, okay, I'll wait a few weeks until I get the console and have it set up and get it that way. So I stuck the disc in there, did the patching, got all the updates going, that sort of thing, and went off to cook dinner. Because patching takes a long time, and installations take a long time. So, got that done. Several hours later, started playing the game, and I noticed a one-second delay between gameplay and the audio on my soundbar. And doing some research on this issue, this is a not uncommon problem. My setup is different from what I was seeing on other sites because my setup is video directly to the television and then audio out to the soundbar through optical out for a variety of reasons related to how I got the soundbar. I, I was a stupid person. I bought a display model because I was cheap. Um, don't be penny wise and pound foolish. I will say that. Uh... Also, don't be Pennywise the Cloud, because that's just creepy. Um, but, so it is hooked up to the television via opti optical out, so the picture is going um, Xbox TV soundbar. Where, whereas most of the setups I was seeing where this issue was coming up was HDMI, Xbox Series X, soundbar, television. So, now I fixed the issue by power cycling the TV. Um, I probably could have also done just as well by power cycling the um, Xbox Series X. I did not try. I've not tried that yet, and I haven't had much because I haven't had much of a time since then, just because I am working um, on my day job. Um, so I haven't had as much time to spend more more at the console to try and get try and narrow down what brings this about. My suspicion is. That this is related to the amount of time I had the console up and running, but I am not sure. So I will experiment on this further. If I get any, if the issue comes back at all, and if I run into any further developments, I will bring it up on this channel in some form or another. Whether it's a separate video, whether it is a, um, whether I'm doing it using just talking about it in passing when one of my live streams or what have you. But it, I will bring it up here. If I don't bring it up here. On the video channel, it will come up on my blog at countzeroor.com. One of the, one of those two places. But it will be discussed if the issue returns. Other than that, um, from what I played of Wolfenstein the New Order looks great. My, my complaint more is... How to put this? I am annoyed with the state of capture devices these days. The fact that I have a Avermedia 4K capture device that it can't, or it'll do 4K picture, but it won't do HDR. So I'm going to be able to do, try to do some capture stuff with it, but I can't get me HDR plus 10 or any other fun stuff to really represent the game whenever I decide to do video of this. I'm almost better off doing photo doing just a regular blog post and photo still capture uh, captures and not doing the video with it i don't know we'll see how that goes um i have several other games from my game library and free to play stuff that i have downloaded i will play those and try to do some thoughts on this later this will probably be more of a blog post kind of thing for that because it if i again because of the video capture issues. Well, as one of the things that Giant Bomb themselves observed when they were trying to do launch coverage of these consoles is that it is there is currently a limited um, manner of solutions, I will say. Not number, but manner of solutions for gameplay capture. Elgato and Avermedia both have 4K devices, um, but they also don't do HDR, and that is a significant part of the equation such as it is. So, 
once I get the PlayStation 5, I will try to do a more polished review uh, unboxing of that with what I have learned from this experience. And I hope you will all look forward to that. Thank you. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that. <laughs>